Welcome, welcome, Faran. Thanks yeah. for joining us. All right, so firstly, I know you reside in Portland. I'd yeah. love to know, where do you draw inspiration from when you're doing your art? Well, you know, honestly, art, you now, after doing this for, for some years, it, it becomes more of a, a, a what, what should I say now? You doing a response to things that you feel like is necessary. So it kind of come outside of just drawing inspiration again. Um, so it's more like doing things to inspire others. So it, it really everything in, in terms of inspiration, everything become a part of that inspiration. Whether you feel like do it, whether you feel like don't do it, you just have to do it. So how do you engage multiple senses through your art? Can you describe a piece that only not only captivates the eyes, but also evokes other sensory experiences? Well, for art now, I'm really try to drive a kind of message and, and the work them just encoded with, with a certain kind of iconography. And it, it, you have to just look the similarities with that and other artists where, where kind of practice a similar kind of feel and that kind of esoteric kind of vibe and kind of metaphysical art. So in, in a way, it, 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 it is a part of that forum. Um, by itself, it, it get that from perceived nature of the work. Um, so in terms of the emotional drive and so on, people, viewers may just, you know, get different kind of feeling from that. But overall, it, the, the initiative behind the work is, is generally based on a, a set or a, a, a theme that we work from. Yeah. Please speak about the paradox of musical artists, especially in Jamaica. When starting out, they do everything and anything to get popular. But once popular, they seem to hide from the same people they wanted to see them. Well, that, that no, no. That not just synonymous with just music alone, that kind of go across the board. No, because most people, most people, if, if you find that you're working, and there's, there's two sides to it, and we're going to discuss these two sides, right? There's one side that is generally, people generally just feel like, them want to garner this popularity or this affluence. And whenever they do, to some extent, them part companies with people because, you know, them, them really did want just money and just them way out. They never really want the whole of our friends. As them would have sing about the whole of our friends every day and keep the whole of our friends every day. So sometimes people just want a way out, you know, and it's poverty this. There's another side to it too, right? whereby when, when people want to disassociate from, from others, sometimes in going for this affluence, it, it negate that, that away from everything else that people would have normally just, you know, feel like you have a reason to live for. So, for instance, people say, all right, we just want to get rich, we want to get some money, we want to have this lifestyle. And then having this lifestyle, it, it perpetuates a, a sadness among people who you seem to, to, you know, like driving, going back in the ghetto, having a Ferrari or a Rolls Royce in, in America. You can't do it. You can't go back in any projects with that. You have to leave. You, you, you have to leave, right? So sometimes it's just the way two sides to it, yeah. Many Jamaican youth have tremendous talents that unfortunately go wasted. But do you believe the youths are giving up on their talents due to lack of resources, lack of support, lack of confidence, or just laziness? All right. Here is the dynamic now. Jamaica, we not get paid for talent. Even though you have people who are talented here who are, you know, pretty much well off. But starting up, are doing things on a, you know, a, a, just a level of service and to the, 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 the country, doing whatever creativity you want to, to, to pursue, you will get hung ups because people don't really pay for creativity here. People will get it abroad, people will go online. All you can do, AI can do it too. The competitive edge kind of, you know, and then Jamaica is this, even though if you get rid of this third world country thing, the, the, you know, because you never really have to do with who have money and not have money. The, the whole 
first world, third world. It is it's really a war, perpetration of war, and who they join which side did make that world. So, it, yes, but we, we, we not, you know, a, a kind of a, 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 a lower, you know, financial stability, so to speak. But yeah, we, we, we can, and we have talent, we have a lot of talent, but where the youths give up is that sometimes they don't see that talent giving them the life where they want to live. And life in the 80s is not life now. So you can do some song, you can plant a farm, and you can have some herb for smoke, or you can do your thing. In them time, you have six picnic in the yard. And you know, you have a woman, and then we understand, then we know, say, yes, this is the best man possible. Today, what is the best man possible? See, one G wagon pass there. What is the best man possible? Yes, see, one more Lamborghini drop there. So me I show you, the, the, the stakes are different. So a young man at 30 years old, 50 years ago, 30 years ago, <laughs> not a 30 year old today, you know? So it, it, it's a vast difference. Please explain what Dr. Knife refers to as your metaphysical approach to creating art. How have you been able to capture the spirit of a person or image in your artwork? Hmm. All right. See, again, the metaphysics where, where, where Dr. Knife talk about, Dr. Knife is an is a instrumental one in, in, the, in the development of, of you know, enough of our understanding with art and philosophy. And in that, in that it's it, it not so complex as people think, because, you know, if you check even what PhD means, it's a doctor of philosophy. You know, any faculty of study you want to do. It's philosophy you got really do. So the highest state of, of study right now is the arts and philosophy. You have state of the art, this state of the art, that. So arts, philosophy, it, it was always kind of on that. So art is over, I believe, art is over, I kind of dive deeper than just the, you know, the, the, the mere elements of art, the, the, you know, how it look and what materials they use, but more so the concept behind it you know, why you do this, how this relate to what you're saying and how it translates to this and them things. So the deeper you go with that, it kind of helps. That's why we kind of pull from artists like Ross Daniel Artman, which is, to me, the most prominent artist in a Rasta history. In the past 50, 60 years, I find Ross Daniel work heavily, heavily encoded. So that metaphysical kind of a presence where it transcends just, just you, transcend this understanding of nature to, to a higher development where man still have access to. So it, it, this kind of encoding of art, the iconography in it, become Rasta, it become the identity. It become a part of the Caribbean identity because it manifests from here. Has technology distracted people appreciating the important role art and artists play in the cultural development of a society? Well, to some extent, yeah, because some things where art do people think is technology do it. And there are things where art can do what technology still can do. Right? It can maybe account for it to some extent. And we can go back to all of these ancient civilizations and we can understand that. You know? All of these different civilizations where they kind of concurrently run, they, they advance in their own ways. So that, to an extent, did kind of explain what technology was at that time. Because when people see some things move the way it moved at that time, it was an advancement of this human aspiration. And help you by creating tools and so it kind of limit you know, the amount where you used to do. So if we put that in context, today, man now have in our possession and, and you know, to him disposal, the best and the greatest things what we could have ever as a species want and work for today. And today, man account for the saddest and the most depressed of all. So put that in now in, in relation to how that, how this advancement chances. So 
just you know for the viewers just put that now into a, a, and translate that into it you know how technology and man and if you want to take away one and say how you can factor in these two, two two elements you know so the variables are there if your art could speak for itself in three words what would they be and why I don't know. I, I, I think about three words right now. Come, we'll come back because you know a three words on the spot. So sometimes you might say three words off at the top of your head and then they might hit solid enough with, with what really, really fundamental with you. You know? So I would say truth. You know? I stay true to myself. I try to stay true to what I do. Right? Um, relevance. Right? Why? You know? That account for why I do it. You know? And how I do it. And... Uh, which other word would I just say? And it, it, these things kind of real, real to me, right? I'm not sure why it's a word. An we can't come back. We we'll go back to our next word. Uh, yeah, intrigue. Intrigue. Yeah, intrigue is a good word. Yeah, intrigue is a good enough word. Because me always like intrigue. If me no know, me no know. Please speak about the similarities in the creative processes of creating art, musical arts, and culinary art. Elaborate some more. All right, so so with with all of these different farms now, um, the the people here kind of broaden it, it, it kind of contextualize, kind of narrow it down. We we here in Jamaica, the creativity, it, all of these all of these the meshing together them, them kind of become a force in one where it it start to become the culture itself. And it, these three elements more so encompass the majority of what the culture is, or the expression of the culture, the arts, the music, the art. And then these now become such an affluent part of the culture. And it most times, the creative parts are not the parts that in school, let me even say you must really try to focus on. And I always leave that for the last. You know, the, who, who left me do that? <laughs> yeah. And then the handful of people in this world were creative and really push it because in a Jamaica, I question about the handful of people are creative. Right now, I believe the majority of Jamaicans are creative. It's not a handful in Jamaica. Jamaica is a hot spot. So the, that creative force, it become the culture. It become the people itself, you know? And then everything else kind of wrap around that. So them, the, the, the three elements, them, it, you know, it, just the fundamentals. Please explain what alchemy looks like in this modern space and time. Would you consider yourself an art alchemist? People consider me as an alchemist. People consider me as an art alchemist. Um, and then it go into what definition is, you know, them give to alchemy. So that, that transformation and making use of whatever there is, which in its state is not really so much seen as something to, to value. And then it transforms itself into this. So it, it, those elements, people see with it in, in that regard. And then we look into it and we see the similarities of how we work with that. So again, that again is a part, a fundamental part of our development. It go again speaks to the, the, the philosophical kind of identity where you pull from. And most of these things are kind of kept secret. Mostly in secret societies, they hear about these kind of things because the order will kind of run the world. That is why most information, valuable information, is kept in password protected sites even online you can't just get access to things of valuable it is kept a secret because people really want it after show so they want it so i'm kind of question to what extent people are crusaders go around and want you to believe in them and really they start out from killing people who don't believe in a way i say forget you for believe and then they just kind of defeat the purpose so we're not sure were you influenced by the artwork of the great Russ Daniel Hartman? How would you explain his approach to art? The great, yes. Yeah, man, Russ Daniel is the great. And indeed, influenced by Russ Daniel Hartman. Among others, but Russ Daniel to me is the most prominent artist where, you know, I really look at Russ Daniel's work. And one other thing is, when we get for, 
if you understand. Most of the works that we see, even the Rasta baby, you know, for us, every, most people don't know that it's Ras Daniel work. And that's the one of Ras Daniel child. Um, so overall, Ras Daniel work, him never really get is the unsung hero in a, the move and him in a him in a movies and so on, you know, you don't know. So it, it, it kinda come round to to just Ras Daniel and when work speak about you go and look now, you still can decode it. Because me get access to some of Ras Daniel work where in a private collections. Where it, it is still questionable if even most of them children ever see these works. Because Ras Daniel is just a get to work one time, psh, done. And it's just this charcoal or the deep pencil and it's just, you know, very deep. So it, it work heavily encoded, you know, Ethiopian, Egyptian, you know, sometimes even Hindu, because at that time, you know, we did just kind of move from that influence of, of India in a Rasta, which pretty much Indian is the influence Rasta start from. Again, because of that, that, that civilization, so India, Ethiopia link, did kind of already start from mesh. Even before that, long, it just re revived itself. Yeah, but there's always this correlation. But indeed, Rasta Daniel work, Still, to me, the, the most tremendous effort. Um, really, see like Da Vinci and them you there, kind of going at that. Even though Da Vinci, them are great, great artists, but because them do them own, you know, study, and again, them pull from other sources that them not speak about, you know, because you know, Platonism, Neoplatonism, really, I come from Hinduism. A Platonism, I talk about this oneness of everything, and. I, Adi Shankar then don't tell about that 1,000 years before Plato them. So, yeah, so Ras Daniel work, you have a look into it and you start the equal things. So, could you elaborate on his approach to ours? Well, Ras Daniel approach, as I say, Ras Daniel is because you don't find any evidence of lots of sketches that he used to do. It's not this person who just have this time to sit and do like 10, 20 scan, wait and it's inspiration again. It's just this, it, it just have to be done because him just full up of, 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 of everything to say and to do and him, him understanding of this, I got go beyond him. So him have to transfer it. So Ras Daniel was a, 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 a person who just beyond him time. And him approach to art just show that him, him really did have a limited time for do what him do and him, him work still not uncoded by people. So even though him approach is somewhat based on the minimalist kind of a approach with, with materials, so to speak, mostly pencil work and some, you know, some very simplified kind of drawings mostly and them, you know, very, very meticulously done. And it, it, it have this sharp detail you know, it, it just be on me how somebody at that time really did I do that. So, it, and you can look back on the work them as we talk and you saw me and say, it, it just really, really deep. Yeah, so, so yeah, man, my approach is similar, man, metaphysics. Can you break down the historical connection between Ethiopia and India? All right. See, again, them two nations. All right. Now, I want the viewers, if you look into these two nations, which I believe today are the two oldest nations on earth. Why me say these two nations are the two oldest and not one before the other, right? Even though there are evidences that some of one developed before some of the, and then some things of the other side kind of seem to have developed before. So it, it's still a kind of a quandary. But in that, scholars, a little bit the history and Pan-Africanists, all of these people, right? It's not a debate as to how Indians influence Rasta, Ethiopian Rasta culture today. That is not a debate that is easily identified, readily available. What we are talking about more now is the connection between 
ancient Ethiopia has been so old, right? The topaz in Ethiopia. Mention even in a Bible. The topaz. All right. So, India, Ethiopia, Kush, one region. You have Indo Kush, and you have the Kush where go down to Aksum back into Ethiopia. Now, there's a civilization we start in that area, which there's a earth, there's a life start in the Kush region. We know that. Even in Ethiopia, them have the oldest are the oldest fossils, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of put that spectacle into perspective. You know, where, 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 you know that place in time. So you have though, Ethiopia developed empires before India. Ethiopia had dynasties of kings and emperors before, right? Even though you have emperor, I have kings, right? From India. Right? Like Malik Ambar, who was an Ethiopian. And them say yeah, Ethiopian kings used to rule India, but it, it's not based on them riding, going into India, but conquer India. That was never a part of history. I could just rule that out. There is no blackwashing of history right here. We are get straight to it. Right? This was an enslaved, Arabs enslaved him, Ambar. Brought him into India. India liberated him and him become part of the consulate. Him become part of the sultanate and become part of the highest governance in India. But before that, you have civilization like Arapan civilization where predate Egypt. Because Egypt are baby in the argument. Egypt, Egypt, not Egypt. Ethiopia flowed down the Nile to Egypt. God developed Egypt. Egypt and Greece and all of these people. Now, in it. Now, why I said these two civilizations run concurrent is because the, the region, the Kush region, is a region where account for the oldest civilizations. Now, in that context, Ethiopia started developing these kings and dynasties before the, the Gupta dynasty, all of these in India, right? So there's evidence of that because even in Mahindradara, in that city, Mahindradara, in an Arapan, ancient Arapan civilization, right? There was, right now, they still have the city. And there is no central building, no hierarchy looking structure. So there was no king kind of setting in that civilization. So India kind of adapted that. If you look at the custodianship, look at the dressing, look at the way that these two nations kind of relate. You see again that, that similarity. So these two nations did already start to have that, that correlation from way before. Right? If you check again, language, Giz language, it's very, very old. The Sanskrit language, it's very, very old. Right? Now people say the Ganges River name of our Ethiopian king, Gan Ganges. Again, that is questionable. I've over the 220 odd kings where Ethiopia have, I have never seen the Emperor Ganges. I would hope somebody reinform me, give me some evidence of that. I don't know that. But those kings only started to develop and started to rule dynasties at a certain time BC. Now, 10,000, 12,000 BC, the Matsya Purana talk about the Ganga, the Ganges River, spoken about how much a thousand years before the kings of Ethiopia did even start. So the, the Sanskrit language again, as I said, the similarities with these two nations, it run concurrent. But I believe that Ethiopia existed really before. But again, how we go back go track all of these things. How we do that without falsifying evidence to suit a particular narrative. Can you tell us the history of Indians in Jamaica and their influence on the Rastafari movement? All right. See it again? See it again? The influence again come again true. We developing an ideology here in the West. 
because we seem distant from origin. We seem distant again from even a sense of self and sense of power. We even feel distant again from a spiritual basis, which is even more fundamental than where we're coming from and everything. Because that place where we're coming from and so on, they develop the spirituality where it could bring you to anywhere, anytime, anything. All right. So, because it, it, it seemed like, because this is just our speculation at the time, Rasta developing, right? That at that time, we seem to have a need for reinforce that sense of self, that ideology where you're enslaved and you're in a place where for how much years, 400 years, and you know, this is not really where you did come from. No, no, where were there, you never come from, yeah. You know, we are looking for one another, endangered slaves, Indians. We are looking for one another, black man there here, where did they are from all long. So, hmm. All right, what we do? We come together now and realize that there is a stronghold, a force where they here to be reckoned with. What is that stronghold? Where the Indians bring from India, apart from curry, chickpeas, weed, where everybody love and know, ganja again, ganja, ganges. All right. So what we do is, these people bring this, and then bring this, yes, yes, India, invent this, all right, question it if you want, India invent that, how much, how much, how much thousand year, name Jata, same like how people like Spain guitar, and I say Spain invent guitar, and India invent that, if you look on the vena, it's a string instrument, the only string instrument, we play by mother Saraswati, that is how much a hundred thousand year that written, right? That did it. And the vena go down to the sitter and go down to guitar. All right. So we understand now that these indentured slaves, it bring more than just weed and these things. Then it bring them spirituality. Now, an ancient, I don't remember the ancient the name, but the ancient did that show, we say. And even Rasplaco still have that same understanding because Rasplaco is a profound far right we, we have knowledge of this to just the same which most people still are deny because them no one for accredit nothing for do the rasta with india right yeah, you have people just fundamentally just blah, radical no no not not just black 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 all right black wash everything all right so what we do is we give credit where it is due so all right leonard owell have a name the ganguru maharaj That is an Indian name. That is an Indian title. Now, these people, the guru them, it's sit down, normal. Them have a disciple, a set of disciples. It's the same thing the Christian edifice kind of built from, where Christ have these disciples. Because again, Krishna predate that. All of these gurus and spiritual masters before Christ predate that. Where did have them disciples? And they say this kind of weaving that into the discussion. But the Rastas start to realize that this power base where the Indians and the Hindus in Jamaica did have is them have them own God. They have their own power system, their own structure, their own family system. Them own network, them vegetarian lifestyle, them renounce the world. And then we just sit down for a straw mat and simple them. They're more happy than anything. I'll water on them. Eye. And it be unhappiness and sadness. Because it proven when Alexander the Great got India and buck up and Dandamus the Great. Dandamus the Great. Alexander the Great, idiot. I feel drop him guard. Because this man never surrendered to him. This man no fear death, no fear nothing at all. He's a simple man from a straw mat. You can't offer him nothing in the world. He's an uncorruptible soul. So Rasta did reach to that where we were uncorruptible because people who have no ambition is uncorruptible. Once you have ambition, you can be corrupted. If you can't offer me nothing at all, you can't corrupt me. There's no way. That is the root. 
So these people they understand this dynamics and it did they hear. If you look on the ancient man, he used to do this. Live it, but it missing. That's why we have to stay hidden now. And who want it, we get it. That's why everybody are going to know the depths of spirituality. Because if it take you four to five years to learn to read and write and say your name, you think it's going to take you four or, five or ten years to understand the, the, the true nature of existence? So if people have to understand that, put that in perspective, it might sound bad, but me is a real smarty, I tell you the truth. And everybody are going to know your realness. And everybody are going to know. A percentage, a minute percentage of people are going to know too. Because it takes a lifetime to uncover that much. Because it takes you like a third of your life to you develop your understanding, your tolerance, your patience. Hopefully develop your feet, drop your anger, your greed, your desires can be leveraged. It, all of these things not, not fully worked out in a the fully grown man and woman life. So if you not get rid of all of them, the struggles there. Oh, you have to reach to you know all of you. You have to full up your brain and so much something. And you tell people how to live and you still not fully as a woman says something or your man says something. You lick them down or you tell them you love them. You're still incapable of the basics. So we go back again to where the ancient man them from the strama them in India. That is why Ethiopia and India still have the only two civilizations. We're still running. Where is ancient Greece? In a museum. Where is ancient Egypt? In a museum. Where is ancient Mesopotamia? Persia. Where is all of these civilizations? In museum. Where is ancient India? It did the same way. Where is ancient Ethiopia? It did the same way. It a practice? Yes, the Batawe priest is still up on the rock, on the mountain, same way a chant. It's the sweetest chant them you could ever hear. Listen to Ethiopian Batawe priest. Or you listen to the Brahmana priest them. We are singing the Sankalpa mantra in India today. Listen to them, right? We practice Vajrayana. Do practice, listen them, listen them, listen to your Nirvana Shatakam, where Adi Shankara write 4,000 years before Christ. Read them something and listen, I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am beyond this physical. That breakdown, how much years before Plato, Socrates, all of these little people, we come and learn a part of it. But Rasta did identify that it was a core part of we. Because the ancient world was one. India, China, Ethiopia, all of these people. Semitics bring everything right through that plane. We are separated. Ancient kings like Mahandaka, King Janaka from the Ramaya, right? All of them people used to do fire ceremonies in ancient Ethiopia. Yogi Raj Siddhana Guru Nat talk about meeting Emperor Haile Selassie. 1981. 1981 in England and in record. So we are going like we don't know there's something there. You have a part to this where the world no know. And who know can only speak so much. But it is there. And it is not found in this great affluence of the world. Because it's beyond this physicality. So who want this physicality go Wall Street? <laughs> I go on a bank of Jamaica, but who want that? Dead. Yeah. What do you believe is the root cause for the moral decay of Jamaican society? A couple of things there, you know. Yeah, me feel like a couple of things there will contribute it. Uh, it go back to personal, personal issues, and how you as a person translate into developing you know, the best of outcomes possible for you and your family and then how this family work as a unit and this unit kind of uh, contribute to the gradual growth of the community and then the circuit kind of build with that same kind of understanding. But once the understanding breaks down from the individual perspective, because 
collectively you know, that alone can happen you know. but there is no such thing as organized unity and big power intervention don't work because that strip away reality from us now jamaica is a small developing country i'm going to use a simple example to show you what deteriorate most of a big country out there with statistics america since the implementation of welfare in America, we see the decline in our family rapid, but we see the increase in our picnic ban. Because the woman get money if she don't have a father in the household. In that, it starts to become a scheme to live from. And you find said degradation of the family start go down. Right now, 20% of black families in America married. 40 years ago, it was 73%. Now, when you mash up, as me show, when you mash up the family, so all what talk about racism, all not talk about that. All what talk about what white man do to black man, all not talk about that. All not say welfare, affirmative action, is one of the worst things we ever create on earth. Because you yeah, tell me, say, me not good enough. But because me look like me disenfranchised, just give me a blight. So that lower me qualification, me qualifications job, me standards job. No, black people not equip long time, man. We know the brightest people long time. We don't want that. No tell me nothing about two year black going to college. So you feel like me not qualified? No, man. So these things, when you step in and do certain things, it starts to erode your credibility, the erode your sense of independence and you being seen as a you know a person of quality and society a contribute and everybody to say yes this person is valid. Them still have their own way. So it, 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 it diverse. Do you believe the Rastafari movement is currently growing or declining in Jamaica? And can you provide the reason for your answer? The looks of the movement is growing but the reality of the movement to me is stagnant it it it's hard to say decline because you know it it it's still profound it still is the driving force behind most of the, the moral ethics and the conduct were similar to the past were really so fundamental. As an Ethiopian Orthodox is such a, a, a strong word and such a strong thing in Ethiopia because Orthodox means unchanged. Even though we don't have an Orthodox culture or a church culture much in Jamaica as Rasta, you know? But Jamaica have this church culture. Jamaica have most church per square mile, but we still have a whole heap of crime and a whole heap of everything and a whole heap of unruly people. So you realize, eh, the more you try to trap people I try to tell them if you go seek one something, them not going to do it. Naturally, that shouldn't show you. So it's only a small percentage of people going to really see the thing. So as I say, the looks of Rasta is growing. People who look like the something, you can find a lot of them. They are everywhere. They even have big jobs and everything now that original Rasta never have and still no want. But... How much of what is you hear? And then again, how much of what is is validated? Because people speaking on behalf of this, enough time don't really so knowledgeable about the thing. Most of them don't really so knowledgeable. I'm most rasta. How much time say my one bingy? Ask the rest of our bingy. Alright, so now bingy celebration is going, right? I have a couple different times of the years so and now bingy celebration is going. And certain things. So you have certain things where is a part of the culture, right? Certain things will bring with from one state to this state. Fastest rising lifestyle on earth. Right? We're not just 50 years span. The amount of people who we influence on earth. But we take that for granted. Just like how we take with natural resources for granted and we make other people come and take advantage of them and then we cuss. 
Just like how we did start out, we said we want to influence the world and we want everybody to sing the reggae music. Play the reggae music, boy. Sing the reggae music, boy. Europe, sing the reggae music. No Ireland are the capital for reggae. No foul vex. What we used to sing? Go over Europe, sing the reggae music. In France, love the reggae music. Italy, love the reggae No when they love it. So it's like you didn't want smile to be a star upon your lane. And when you become a star, you become such a star. We kind of outshine you. So it's like, we didn't really want this. We didn't want reggae for the every weapon earth. But we if it's still a developed thing here. We need to have some arenas to music. We need to have some more bodies. We're not just a govern music. And say so that them are the people who are on music. But people are really a stand up feet and are put things in. We need museums more than just Jamaica Music Museum. Right? We need all of them. We need Edna Manley. They are one. One Edna Manley. Right? So we are saying we, we can't just function over these secular little avenues for such a diverse thing, for such a big emphasis we put on the reggae so till we ban weed and when you go to the airport and rest a man and smoke weed on a little something there man and invite people with that. So it's like put some more effort into that. You know, put some more effort into that. You know? Have you been creating any art recently? Yeah. No. I create art recent but I am not painting as as consistent as I, I normally do. There was a time, and this is the old me talking now, but it's like 2013, 2014, we start to look into things, and me start to approach like 200 drawings every year. Now, maybe me do like 20 or so drawings for the year. Because as me say, your focus start to narrow, you come out of this experimental zone and you come out of this practice zone and want to do everything where just pop up in your brain. No, you kind of start target certain things like, you know, me always that tell them, say this refugee thing is something where people need to look for. So right now, me kind of do some work on the refugee crisis, you know. So we, we, we need to look into that, need to look into this kind of identity thing we are going with Jamaica. With, you know, like, you know, just the, the, the nature of Jamaica being surrounded by water. And this water kind of separates us and connects us. So, and then you look on sea crossings where people have crossed by sea. And then you look again upon the, the atmospheric kind of disturbance of airplanes, where sometimes, again, this global issue everybody are talking about. There, there are deeper kind of relations with that. We're, we're kind of spoken of widely. So we, we are looking for enough concerns with enough things. But we want to do some work where I talk for more people other than this one little set of people, you know. And I like me, I go glue, glue myself to the street. Like, you know, I go glue myself to some wall. We, we are trying to talk something where everybody can understand and use all our time now to do it. So people have to just educate themselves, can read into what we are doing. Our education means just art, the language of art, get familiar with it. Picnic can develop that, everybody can develop that. It speaks the same language anywhere upon earth. So yeah, we just, just get that together. So speaking on refugee, how do you feel about the Haitians in Portland? All right, Portland now is kind of a, a closer, proximity with, with Haiti, with all the, the traveling and the consistency of people coming in. But there is a there is no really reform around the, the, the migrant refugee crisis. You have the big UN of the Refugee Council and them have what them consider refugees, a generalized term. And that now you have to kind of rest, you have to have a host country where we're a part of that treaty and them have a house you, you have to apply for your refugee status and that is when you're, you're, you're officially regarded as a refugee. Now, it, most times refugees are it misused with, with terms like migrant or asylum seeker. It, it's totally different. A migrant is somebody who just want left to go look a better life. 
Asylum seekers, somebody might do something here, so I just want to run with your time and might go back. A refugee cannot return to where they are coming from. If you return, you will be prosecuted. You will be killed most times, most likely killed. Just like Syria. A third of the world's refugee coming from Syria. And if them go back to Syria, they are dead. If you go back to Syria, you are dead. Now, you have refugee camps now where people are talk about. Asian refugee crisis is, is, you know, fractional compared to the Rohingya refugee crisis. The, the Rohingya refugees from Myanmar um, are about 800,000. About 800,000 gone in a Sri Lanka one time. And Sri Lanka little so. So imagine, right now you have Europe, countries in a Europe right now where lead the, 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 the refugee, the anti-refugee centre. Because them say when so much people come into the country are unqualified, them can't work, them can't do nothing. So everybody are going to just take up space. So people have developed enough things, yes and no, towards, but it's a crisis. People need help. Them alive. Them have life. Them stripped. That's why war are Gaza going. Because you have a set of people who are living in a refugee camp for all long, from 1940s coming up to now. All of the peace where they initiate between the two people, it's obvious. Israel don't really want a two-state solution. Every time the people say it, them don't want it, right? The Palestinians want to just live, right? The US and everybody there, everybody have them own a way for them. But refugees are got there here. Because them been here. What the first refugee? You think a World War I is start? You know, was Genghis Khan, Temujin, Genghis Khan is the greatest conqueror ever lived and will ever live and have lived. Because no man now going to live if he can conquer one third of the earth again. And have over 17 million people within bloodline today. Genghis Khan was a refugee too. When they killed him father after he married to the next tribe, Genghis Khan couldn't rule the clan because he couldn't become Khan. He did have to leave. Them enslave him. Because the Mongols, if you look at Mongolian people, they look Chinese. The Mongols now travel, go up to Siberia. If you look at Siberian people, they look Chinese. And then the Siberian people, they travel, go up to where nowadays Russia Kind of day, about 35 miles from America, Alaska, not America, Alaska. And if you look upon the Inuit people, <coughs> them look Chinese. If you look upon the, the, the indigenous people of Canada, them look Chinese. Them have this kind of facial structure. If you go down further into South America and into Central America, you go down to the Olmec, the Aztecs, all of these people, them look Indian Chinese. If you look for Mexican people today, they have similar. So, you see, this nomadic movement of Earth, again, if you read the Anuman Chalisa, which is written by Hanuman from the time of Lord Rama, Umochi, Umochi, all right. What Anuman Chalisa say, the distance of the sun from the Earth is 90 million miles. And it calculated in Yojanas, in a, you know, Sanskrit terminology. Now, it's similar to today's calculation. How is that possible? Now, it might sound fantastic the way that Hanuman described that measurement. How him come to that measurement is fantastic, but the measurement is accurate. It's the most accurate ancient measurement you can find today. And it's written the same way in the Hanuman Chalisa. And him said, in at the same time, that there is a civilization directly opposite to ancient India. Bharat. Bharat is the ancient word. Not even a word, it's a mantra. Bharat. An ancient civilization directly opposite. And if you look upon that globe, a really 
Mexico, and them people. You know, Central America. Them people, they have a civilization too. We are run too. So, it, it, it's the same way it go around. You know, similarities there, the man. If your art could speak for itself in three words, what would they be and why? All right, first, first word is intrigue. Feel like intrigue. And I, I personally want to have that element of intrigue in the work because I believe, and again, the next word is truth. And to some extent, the three words kind of connect and correlate, right? So it's, it's truth, intrigue, and self. It's directly from me. This is me. This is really what me, you know, absorb and interpret and use my mind or my brain or Mine are really in a brain. So, you know, there's no scientific proof that the mind is in the brain up to today. The gray matter and all of this chat, 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 chat. But truth, self, and intrigue, three words, what we kind of put together. What we feel like, to an extent, we describe me, my approach to my profession and to my life overall. Because your profession is what you do, it's not you. This is not even me, this is my physicality. The real me, the, in, the inside, you know, really, you know, but all right. So, with, with, with that intrigue, life itself is intriguing. Life now is a manual. Life can really come with this where you can say, hey, this is how you do it. There's no one anything. You even have a, a diet for people, vegetarian, you're vegan. You still have two, three different vegans. So, overall, it, it, it individual. And everybody have an individual way to see it. It's pretty much why so much gods and something there in India. Because <laughs> everybody see it one different way. So much religion there in Jamaica because everybody see it one different way. So much church is here. Everybody approach it differently. Is a reason for that. It's a kind of combustible entanglement where have a chaotic kind of a order. If that makes sense. It have, it, it have an order to it. So life have an intrigue. And then life have this, this truth to it where you have to stay to. And that truth is like the rhythm of life. You go against it, you get through all over the place. You just go with it. Whether you like to or you don't like to. Whether you're inspired or you're uninspired. Whether you're happy, sad, whatever. Life don't really want to care about that. And then it come back to you now, self. Self, inquiry. Self not meaning your ego, not meaning this. Not meaning what you see or what you want, your identity and your desires. Nothing to do with that. Self, <laughs> knowing what really uh, generate this life, what cause all of these things to happen, what allow you the skill to digest the food where you put in your stomach. How do you do that? Do you do that? All right. So, there is a certain dynamic with life where you still not understand. But if you start to chart that part, you find that is the most exciting thing you could ever do. Self-inquiry. So, Muda, Muda advise people to go deep in that. Try to understand yourself. Not when just people say, oh, you you understand yourself, you know. Yeah, they have a point, but <laughs> you you understand yourself <laughs> overall. So, yeah. Puran, last one. So briefly speak on the marketability of the woke culture in America. Well, America is exporting a new a new thing. Um, the the woke the woke culture kind of it 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 start up because really being awake or woke, so to speak, it's really a good thing. And like most other things, it starts to go downhill. Because really being awake means that you start to understand things that were not really, you know, going on. And you start to, you know, become more aware of things that really, really important where you never did really. But today, the wokeness that is apparent is not really something what most people want. It's really this this political or politicized agenda, really. 
All right. Make we look on some aspects of some woke parts of the culture. You have parts of even children, them are infiltrated in a schools with certain textbooks and certain things. All right. Them bring certain people for being you know, a proliferate them up on the road. You have people who have rights and a cry for rights. I don't know how you do that. You have rights and a cry for rights. And then you have people now who have rights where you wonder how them people that get rights. Like, what do you do for get rights? How long are you there? I live and never have no rights. What do you mean? You don't have rights. Like, how? So, all right. So, the woke agenda is the biggest export from America. Not everybody is buying it, though. But it is a part of the woke. It's a part of the thing why you find most people, young people, are uncommitted because they are follow this woke agenda, you know. Women don't need men. And men see girls as, you know, whatever slang them see them as. And the list goes right down the line. So, because, you know, this, this dichotomy is, is, is a part of the, the no profound pop culture it become this a part of the woke agenda. All right, people are here are wait to get visa for how much years? And people are dead for going to one particular country. And right now, they won't be bothered. Right? If you look at the Darien Gap, from between Panama to further up Central America to Mexico, it's the most dangerous gap. And that is the migrant route to America today. More than 300,000 people across the border. So again, you have to wonder, how oh, all of this are happening, why it happen? So, the, the woke agenda, people are rebel, people don't really want to be a part of it. I believe if you don't like a particular place, leave a particular place. You don't stay there and kill yourself about it. If you want it to be your home, you must love it. If you live in Jamaica, you have to love Jamaica. You have to say, yes, this is where I live. This is where I love. If you live in a place where you cannot appreciate, leave it. I believe that is the best solution. Leave it. Why we don't go to Africa and build back Africa? Right. We need leadership. So you see where it stems from. People don't develop this. People have low ability to develop themselves where they can conduct themselves to a particular way and then them people see this truth in them and people can reside with that people you know you not know, just see you have this thing where you want this motive where you approach so again unambitious you have to drop your big ambition and your ego when you're dealing with people ambition don't get you nowhere more than into the hands of corruption and if you run down power is ambition that you have and power, when you're corrupted, you're even more corrupted with power. Yeah, look for um, Idi Amin. Idi Amin was a good leader. He get so corrupt. His wife go to the bodyguard for a few hours and chop her up. Carry her own pit them because look for her. This is where you go with power. This is how far you go with power. You is a good leader until you're coming from zero to, you know, until you become this, you know, the ego full you. So, man, man, and, you know, as I said, if me can run right here, so, and my sister me can run it, me go and run Kingston. And if my sister me can run Kingston, me go try off uh, Jamaica. And if me run Jamaica, Cuba have to look out, you know. Yeah, because my nature is like that. You're not going to stop. You're not going to stop. So you have to surrender that nature to the higher self. Yeah. And that higher self is just there. Just a wait for your face to say, you make a fool of yourself. Yeah, you just make a fool of yourself. Until you get steady and start realize, so all of this are you created. We create all of this. Yeah, we are creating everything.